Hello folks and happy Halloween! To celebrate the season we're going to visit the Rump Family Graveyard located on the grounds of the legendary Teagle Manor and read some terrible tombstone inscriptions as printed on page 17 of this classic haunted house module for Dungeons and Dragons published by Judges Guild way back in 1977. Which was coincidentally the same year that the original Star Wars movie hit the theaters and a little company named Games Workshop published the first edition of White Dwarf Magazine. So this is sort of a self-indulgent video recalling one of my own fond memories of early Dungeons and Dragons. Outside of a few old timers like myself, this might not mean anything to anybody, but uh, that's okay, I'm gonna document it anyway for the sake of posterity, and hopefully you'll get a chuckle or two out of it. Now there weren't a lot of D&D modules available back in the late 70s, as you can imagine. So the city-state of the Invincible Overlord and Teagle Manor, both published by Judges Guild, were kind of the go-to modules for my buddies and I, primarily because they were available and also the settings were expansive and not tied to any specific plotline. If none of us had written a homebrew adventure for the evening, we could just explore another part of the city or a different wing of the manor and get into all kinds of mischief while eating Shakey's Pizza and crushing a 12-pack of Pepsi. So Teagle Manor is described as a great manor fortress on the seacoast that has been magically charmed to protect it from natural decay, wear and tear, and even fire. The manor's hereditary owners, the Rump family, have a long history of bizarre eccentricities which, rumor has it, have led to their ancestral home becoming an extremely dangerous place to visit. So the manor house itself includes all the amenities an eccentric, corrupted, and probably inbred noble family could ask for, including a great hall, a torture chamber, a seance room, a garden grotto, and even a lich's laboratory. But adventurers need to explore the rooms and corridors cautiously because even though Teagle Manor is littered with treasure and powerful magic items, it is also rife with terrible terrors. In the kitchen, butcher's knives animate and fly off the walls. There's also a demon doll in the nursery, a vampire vine in the gazebo, and a black pudding in the outhouse. So the hilarity never stops. Anyway, in the southeast corner of the map, there is a reference to the Rump family graveyard. And on page 17 in the booklet, there is a list of terrible tombstone inscriptions that my preteen buddies and I thought were simply hysterical back in the day. So in celebration of spooky season, I propose we revisit the Rump family graveyard outside of Teagle Manor using this old archive miniatures wizard, perhaps the last surviving character figure from my early D&D adventures and read some of the haunting inscriptions chiseled into Teagle Manor's terrible tombstones. Here lies Ritiena Rump, stuck in her head, pulled back a stump. Rupta learned, with great regrets, beholders don't make good pets. Racy hitched his wagon to a dragon. Now he does, no more bragging. Roger's gullet went awry while eating at the Balrog's eye. Razzle met his term hacking at a purple worm. Roderick, quite a cager, till he failed to pay a wager. Rook wound up on a fork, buried him with the belching orc. Okay, that's a little bit different, but I'm glad I did that, and I hope that you enjoyed this fun-sized trip down D&D memory lane. If you have any memories of early D&D modules, Teagle Manor, City State, or anything else, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear what your adventuring party was up to back in the day. We'll be back shortly with some more tabletop gaming madness, but in the meantime, I hope you and yours have a great Halloween. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.